Hey there, welcome. My name is Alonda Carter and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM videos that's anti-multi-level marketing and I also examine white collar crime and some true crime basically. I like to tell stories that are, relate to anything that's kind of scamming and the people that are involved. This video I had meant to make sooner, but you know, other things took precedence. I want to thank True Crime Rocket Science for his video about Shanann's vision board because that's what inspired me to make time for this video now. Nick is always very insightful. I really enjoy his true crime and I highly recommend his channel. He is very, very thorough. And a special thank you and welcome to my newest patron, Diana. Your support is so very appreciated. I'm looking forward to building a better setup for my videos once we move. And that's why I'm not on camera because I just have too much going on. And there's just only so many things that I can do at one time. And one of them is get myself together, which is not happening right now. It may take some time for me to get the office together, YouTube studio, whatever, get my home together once we move. But people like you help me make small improvements as I continue to create content that I hope you all enjoy. Please don't send any hate to anyone involved in multi-level marketing. Keep it civil in the comment section. Be nice to each other and be nice to me as well. This video is based on my experience, research, and opinion. Please do your own research. If you have been following the Shanann Watts case, then you are most likely familiar with her vision board. And if you are someone who watches anti-MLM content, you have probably heard about vision boards and the law of attraction. I wanted to start this video sharing some vision boards that are not Shanann's to showcase how they are very common in multi-level marketing. You are seeing real vision boards people involved in MLM created. Call them vision boards or dream boards. They are the same thing and there are plenty of examples on Google Images. In general, these boards are images and words that make up these boards that are intended to inspire and motivate the creator. I am not saying these boards in and of themselves are bad. However, in the world of multi-level marketing, they serve as another means to keep people trapped in the belief that through the so-called opportunity, they can achieve time freedom and financial freedom. If you're not familiar with multi-level marketing and the chance anyone has to make it, so to speak, the chance is very, very little. You may hear that 99% of people fail, which is based off of the work of Dr. John Taylor, and his work is linked on the FTC site. Also, I will link a recent video that I made with Dr. William Keat, where we discuss income disclosure statements. I highly recommend you watch it if you don't know anything or know very little about income disclosure statements. I've also included other income disclosure statements in this video because we are going to examine Shanann's vision board and whether what she wanted to happen was likely by correlating her vision with the Lavelle 2020 income disclosure statement. Overall, an income disclosure statement is a snapshot of what MLM distributors made. And I use this loosely since most are making very little within one year. The numbers we have do not tell the full story and are presented in a way that is often confusing and misleading. I have made other videos about Shanann's long history involving multi-level marketing and how she started off in her early 20s with Amway selling their beauty line called Artistry. I will link that video too. Hopefully I'll remember. In multi-level marketing, personal development is intimately connected. As a former Beachbody coach, one of the vital behaviors, of which there are four, is personal development. Part of the lure of multi-level marketing is the idea if you keep a positive mindset, keep working, and never give up on your dream, you too can make it. If you fail, you only have yourself to blame. This overall idea is connected to the law of attraction, and when you start looking into the development of it, you find the new thought movement and mesmerism. I've made videos about that as well. Without going into the entire backstory of Shanann and her involvement with um, Amway, 
let's just, you know, say that Amway is the grand poobah of all MLMs and anything that comes afterwards basically is taking that same concept and repackaging it, reformulating it, revising it. It's just basically another form of Amway, but with a different name, different product, different service, but same sort of concept. When you join any MLM, you are told you are a business owner, when in fact, you are actually an independent contractor. Personal development books are tools that are believed to offer value so you can be successful in the world of multi-level marketing. Amway has Book of the Month, or BOM, they may say BOM, I'm not sure. Other MLMs just refer to personal development, and there are endless lists of books people will recommend that you read. In any group that is comprised of MLM distributors, you will find an endless supply of personal development recommendations on topics such as leadership, entrepreneurship, network marketing, time management, and other things to inspire you to continue chasing the dream that being involved in multi-level marketing is the vehicle that will generate the life of your dreams. Associated with this, are the haters or naysayers. In the Amway world, that is called stinking thinking. If anyone does not hold the same belief, which must always be positive, then you just need to get rid of them and only surround yourself with like-minded people. People who are also part of the MLM club believe that MLM is the ticket to the promised land. You are taught that thoughts are things, and when you hold your vision and purpose in the forefront of your mind, you will be able to accomplish anything. Shanann often posted positive quotes to be inspirational because that's what you're taught to do in the world of MLM. By doing this, you are somehow that light someone needs, and your energy and optimism is the drawing force for the right people who need what you have to offer. Your persistence and determination you believe are admired when in reality that just may not be the case. These quotes all come from Shanann's posts. Shanann, I am sure, had her faults. After all, she was human. I am not trying to paint her to be perfection, but I do believe her years of association with the world of multi-level marketing impacted how she thought and kept her believing even when she did not have money to sustain her lifestyle. She continued to go on these various trips when their bank account was bleak at best. And we do not know which trips Thrive paid for her flight or if they did. We know as a Thrive consultant, it is possible to earn a paid for flight. It is very possible that Shanann paid for her flights herself, which would have added to their debt. Plus, outside of those lifestyle getaways, she would have had to have paid for her hotel room as well. In spite of facing being sued by their HOA, Shanann traveled and held local vendor events. We don't know if Chris or his parents ever suggested that maybe they needed to slow down. I can definitely see the spending on all things around with Thrive to be a huge pain point in the marriage. I can also see why Chris would have found Nikki to be attractive since she seems to have been more financially practical and stable. None of that is a reason for what happened. I'm not trying to excuse Chris or cast blame on Shanann, but I am saying the stress of being involved in multi-level marketing impacted this family. There is no way it could not have. You find a lot of stories on r slash MLM and I've had people tell them to me too and they're just these horror stories of what people have gone through. I know when I was posting all positive vibes like how Shanann did, I thought I was doing something good. And I'm not saying that thinking positively is all bad, but in MLM, it becomes very, very toxic because when you find you are not having the success you think you should, 
it appears that everyone else is living their best life and you're just not. You begin to doubt yourself and then you are told you need to work on your mindset more, read more personal development, and also create affirmations so you can create the reality you want. None of this takes into consideration that those who are at the top of MLM may not have just gotten there on their effort alone. There could be other forces at work, which I will be talking to a couple of other MLM experts about that in future videos. Shanann got Bella to create her vision board. Doing so, though, is not just a Shanann thing. It's part of being in an MLM. You are, in a sense, passing down to your children this warped way of viewing the world through the MLM lens. Many get their husbands involved too, which makes me wonder how deeply was Chris involved in the law of attraction, positive thinking, and affirmations, or did he just go along with it because it was easier to do so? From what we see of Shanann, her life revolved around thinking good thoughts and constantly putting out into the world a lifestyle that in reality was causing the Watts to drown in debt. And Shanann is not alone in this. Many people go into massive debt trying to get their MLM side hustle to work and they too project that they are living their best life. Myself, I spend upwards of $20,000 trying to get Beachbody to work and it didn't. Even when that means that, you know, you'll fake it till you make it, you're, you're willing to do it. However, making it doesn't come just like it didn't come from me and it doesn't come from most people and like in the case of Shanann who was held up as a success story you continue investing in the products events and various types of training because you are determined success is right around the corner in multi-level marketing you are selling the lifestyle that is why all the events are so spectacular spectacular. And that is why so many have these so-called car bonuses. If you are not familiar with how the car bonuses worked, I've covered that in a prior video about Shanann, but you're not just given a car. You have to meet certain qualifications and you have to meet those qualifications each and every month to get that car bonus. It puts you on a non-stop cycle and traps you to work even harder harder at trying to have that passive income you think exists. The Lavelle 2020 Income Disclosure Statement does not provide the total number of brand promoters in their network. We are told that about 52% of those who are distributors just want to get the products at a discount, which would then mean 48% want more than just the discount and are seeking to make money from the opportunity Lavelle offers. We are also told that some want to share the products only on a part-time and limited basis, but we are not told how they determine this number of people. We are told a smaller group wants to build a team so we can assume that this group is a smaller number than those who just want to do it on a part-time limited basis. So we are going to assume there are 100,000 people who are brand promoters. Then by doing so, we know 48,000 of them are looking to make money, either part-time or building a team. And 52,000 are just buying the products because they love the products and they want to get the discount. An active distributor is someone who made at least one purchase, which are those 52,000 people who just want to buy the products and use them and get that discount. This means that the 48%, the 48,000 people who are brand promoters earned commission of one penny or more and enrolled another brand promoter and earned a penny or more in a given month for the calendar year of 2020. Shanann's vision board is incredibly detailed. She was very determined to reach the highest rank of Lavelle, which is 200 VIP K. Her goal in 2018, according to her vision board, was to be 200 K by February. And we know that did not happen. This was achieved post-mortem, which is an entirely different video and I find very disturbing. 
every 14 days, she wanted to hit the 1600 VIP rank again, which means sell that much of the product. She wanted to earn all the Lavelle VIP events, which means she was going to need to recruit and sell big time. Her goal was to have eight people on her team hit the 4K rank each month and two new people at the 12K rank each month. And she wanted to have one person on her team hit the rank of 80K each month. She also wanted three on her team to be at the 200K rank by the Dallas trip. I don't see 40K on her board. Do you see that? My question is, what is the likelihood that people on her team would be able to achieve each of these ranks? Let me break that down for you. Out of the distributor network, most are at the entry level of promoter. Assuming 52,000 out of that 100,000 just want to purchase the products and not sell them. Then we know a 94.7 are at the entry rank called promoter, and that would be 49,244 people. Out of the 48,000 who want to build a team, 36,288 or 75.6% were also at this first rank. As you can see, most people sit at the first rank and it doesn't matter if they are active or team building. According to Shanann's dream board, she was going to have people hitting these various ranks. I calculated each rank level for the overall network of Shanann's team. We know Shanann wanted team builders and let's be honest, anyone involved in multi-level marketing is looking to recruit people who are going to recruit people because that's where the money is. Now let's be very generous and say Shanann had 1,500 people on her team, which I think is very high, but like I said, we're being generous. And let's say that each month she maintained that 1,500 people on her team. So if someone left, someone else replaced them. So it just stayed even. That would mean 780, which is 94.7% of the 1500, would be active brand promoters and 720 on her team would be team builders. Shanann wanted eight people on her team to hit that 4K VIP each month. That means about 108 of her team or 15.1% would be at this level. She also wanted two people to hit the next rank, which is the 12K VIP, which means that there would be 48 people on her team at this level. And she wanted one person on her team to hit the 80K rank each month, which would be five people at this level. Plus, plus she wanted to have three people who were those team builders hit the 200K VIP level. How exactly was that going to happen? How realistic do you think that was? Just by going by the numbers here on the income disclosure statement, the likelihood of people reaching each level decreases substantially across the network and also across teams. I don't think she would have been able to hit this. However, I believe she would have doubled down on her effort and continued holding the belief that it is possible and then pushed harder, which is incredibly toxic, incredibly stressful, and isn't manageable long-term for her, much less for her family. It is believed that Shanann made somewhere between $50,000 to $60,000 a year before expenses when she was a Lavelle promoter, which would not even put her in the top 1% of active brand promoters, but would put her around the top 10% of team building brand promoters. We know Shanann went to these getaways, which very few distributors are able to achieve looking at the various percentages we are given. Yet in spite of this reality, Shanann, who was not really a top Lavelle distributor, she was more like mid-range. And it's at this mid-range level where people like Shanann are used by these companies to suggest to others that as long as they work hard and don't give up, they too can live this luxurious lifestyle. And yet Shanann got mad at Chris when he was paying $16 a day 
for parking. The family was in a financial pressure cooker. Her last weekend alive, she went to a leaders meeting in Arizona, and the night she returned, we know that there was this auto payment to Monet, Monat, that is another MLM, and that her credit card was declined. Something had to give because there was no way she was going to be able to stop. I think it is obvious given that they already had filed bankruptcy once and were now about to lose their house. Being involved in multi-level marketing can completely distort your perception of reality and I think that's very much the case with Shanann. I am by no means blaming her for what happened. But when you are in MLM and you surround yourself with these like-minded people who also hold the belief of the MLM dream, you continue doing things you were told will bring you financial success. And yet, there are so many instances of people losing a lot of money, just like Shanann. True crime rocket science went into not only Shanann's magical thinking, which is the belief that your thoughts, actions, words, or symbols, such as a dream board, can influence the material world, but the affirmation, such as, I am determined, I am happy, I am me, I am confident, I am inspiring, I am beautiful, I am strong, I am unique, I am blessed. In addition to these affirmations, she proclaimed that in three years she would be debt free when most likely she would have incurred more debt because of Lavelle. And then she also said on her vision board in five years, Chris would retire. Retiring your husband is an MLM thing. And I don't know if we know if Chris wanted to like not work or not. She also wanted to have $50,000 in savings by May of 2019. Had she lived, what's the likelihood that this would have been possible given the amount of debt they were already in and the amount of money being spent on Lavelle products and events and all the things. But that is what MLM does to you. If you think positively all the time, somehow you will make it all happen. You will attract to yourself exactly what you envision. I don't think Shanann was envisioning having her life snuffed out by her husband. I don't think she manifested that, but that's what the law of attraction that's what this whole envisioning does is that anything that happens in your life, well, you attracted it to yourself somehow. And I just don't buy that. She had the book Think and Grow Rich by her bedside table. This book is very much law of attraction based and also so much of it has been discredited. However, MLM uses it as a tool which further instills in you that as long as you have the right mindset, you can have anything you want. So if you're not getting what you want, you must be thinking negatively, and then you only have yourself to blame. Following the concept of the law of attraction, Shanann would have attracted the debt she was in, and she must not have been properly aligned to attain what she actually wanted. The thing you have to do then is reframe your thoughts work on yourself more, come up with more affirmations, continue to do all of that so that you can have the life you want. Now imagine being married to someone who believes in the law of attraction and is devouring personal development and you have already filed bankruptcy once. Then you meet someone who lives within their means, has a steady job and isn't involved in MLM. So I'm not surprised that Chris threw away that book about marriage that Shanann bought. I think he had had enough of living beyond their means and just wanted out. At the same time, he was imagining a life with another woman and thought he could have that life by eliminating his family. It is as if he was as delusional as Shanann, neither one grounded in reality in my opinion. Right now, there are many people across the US and around the world who like Shanann believe MLM is the ticket to financial freedom. And in reality, it's a trap that does not empower women. It enslaves them and makes the men who create these companies very, very wealthy. What are your thoughts? What does this vision board tell you about Shanann? Thank you so very much for spending time with me. And until next time, remember you're beautiful and I love you.